to the Popcorn Junkies. Spoiler review, spoiler review. This is spoiler a spoiler review. review. Obviously, I did a non-spoiler review of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Semicolon Quantum Mania. Um, so yeah, this is the third Ant-Man film. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of, I try not to give too much of a sense of what I thought of it in the non-spoiler review because I just, you know, the best situation is for everyone to go and see it, form yes. their own opinion and make yes. their own mind up. Exactly. But I will give just a couple of facts at the forefront here regarding it. It's, of all the Marvel films, it's the uh, second to worst in terms of Rotten Tomato scores, only being beaten by Eternals, which for me was one of the, the, the worst moments in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, an absolute uh, yeah. crock of doo-doo, I felt. Um, yeah. And, and Ant-Man, interestingly, is probably one of my favourite strands of the, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, alongside Guardians of the Galaxy. I think it's where, and Thor, interestingly, it, you know, it's a good combination of humour, I love the innovation of him being a superhero that's small. It mm -hmm. goes down to being small. Mm -hmm. And I love all the, the kind... Man. Yeah, the little man. And I like all that idea that, you know, especially, I think I said in the non-spoiler review, the idea of seeing how his smallness interacted with the world, how being small made the world seem supernatural. Yes. And I thought that was a very clever aspect of yeah. the whole Ant-Man thing. So going into this month, what were your feelings? So I've talked a lot about what I thought of it in the non-spoiler review. So how did you yeah. come at this? Well, it's always been one of my favourites of the strands of the, I can't literally classify them because I'm not no. that good, but I've always, because I love Paul Rudd, I love the idea of Ant-Man. But, and I'll say this straight up front, and you might have said this in mm. your non-spoiler review, considering Ant-Man is an ant and therefore small, there is far too little of him being small. And also, the other thing I'd say is it's Ant-Man and the Wasp, isn't it? Mm. There's not enough of either of those two. Well, I, thought, I, like I thought there was more of the Wasp in this than Ant-Man. There's none of the Wasp, I didn't feel. Oh. So no, I've, I've got great affection for it. Uh, for some unknown reason, <laughs> I was saying this to the kids yesterday, that I seem to understand it better than most of those films, right. in the sense of I'd get what the quantum... I mean, only just in terms of, you know, vague. What is the quantum vague, realm? What is the quantum realm? Also, there was a bit which we'll talk about maybe in this review, that I absolutely love because of all the sort of scientific theories. The one I love the most is the theory, the probability one, the Schrodinger's cat right. one. And there was a central sort of, I felt, mm. peak of that. Mm. And I love that, you know, the fact that this, don't worry, don't worry, this isn't happening, it could happen. Mm. I mean, mm. I think that's a wonderful idea in itself, which is... Yeah, I mean, the premise of it, that they sort of fly into the quantum realm. We've been in the quantum realm before with them, but the fact that his daughter takes us into the quantum realm. Yeah, and then it becomes a sort of then it becomes a sort of classic kind of trapped in the quantum realm. What is the quantum realm? And I think what was surprising for me, and I I'm, I'm still can't work out whether this worked for me or not, was the idea that within this quantum realm, which I always sort of read like the multiverse as being yeah. fractured layer upon layer upon layer of possibility, Possibilities yeah. and potentialities was that there were these sort of almost ready-made communities and cultures and Star Wars-like like, locations. I mean, yeah. we literally had the cantina scene we do. from all the Star Wars films that they yeah. are constantly rinsing for the same effect in yes. every Star Wars uh, yeah. offshoot that there is, which, you know, to the 1970s boy in me is always appealing. Yeah. You have the sort of Jordanian desert used as yes. a sort of sandy kind of, you know, um, tattooing sort of thing. Yes. Right down to, you know, you have the sort of the baddies kind of troops, if you like, looking like sort of stormtroopers, obviously yes, not, not the same, true, but those big shots of them ever so I, I was a bit thrown by all of that I, th I suppose I really didn't like Doctor Strange in the multiverse because no. I found it I find this whole being in a completely non-real world after a while I find it really alienating and I, I, I'm looking for purchase I'm looking for some kind of real purchase and of course the thing that would offer you that in something like this is the is the characters yeah um, there's not enough of the real world you mean in this is that literally but even not just the real world but when you're in the quantum realm i need it to be more than just cgi yeah and landscape it was and weird CGI. rocks and yeah. gloopy bits and yeah. then landing on things I, yeah. you know okay they had the, the odd i wanted and, and the weird thing is, is that even when you were given like a scene like the bill murray scene in the can in the in the canteen type of scenario and a part of me is thinking, well, you wouldn't find this in the quantum. I, I was, I was really struggling <laughs> with the whole quantum realm thing. It just didn't. I wasn't convinced. Yeah, For no, me, no, what, no, what, what works in the Ant Man films is this, and all the superhero films is the collision of of, of lunacy, CGI, and what have you. But it's chained to real people yeah, no, 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 doing yeah, real that, things. Course, and, and right down to it, they had Avengers: Age of Ultron on the other day, and I was watching. I was thinking. Hang on a minute, Marvel's lost something here. This yeah, was, yeah. yes, there's CGI, but it's chained brilliantly to fight sequences and it felt real and it felt like it was happening. Whereas Also, there was so much, seemed to be so much, so much better CGI in, in the Yeah, in a way, so it's like, it's almost because, it's, anyway, I mean, I, don't, I, I, I just struggled with the quantum realm. I found okay. it, I found it a really uninviting place and I thought it was just, 
the random selection of, of creatures which just had strange body things and items and aspects thrust onto each other. There was no cohesion to no. the fictional creation. It was just no. like, let's chuck a load of old shit together. That's true. And also, I mean, I felt, I saw it separately from you guys, but I, I felt the sort of Star Wars, the, to, harking back to the Star yeah. Wars idea, if you walk through a canteen and there's all these strange broccoli headed yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But, uh, but, let's, but just to go back to the start of it, I, I felt the biggest... Um, misstep for me right at the beginning and was the fact that is her name Janet the Michelle Pfeiffer character yeah yeah is it Janet I don't know if it is well, Janet. Well, in the sense that it sort all sorts of hinges on it's the daughter that takes them into that realm but she Janet or whatever her name is the wife of Michael Douglas yeah, says, Janet, yeah. says um it's something I didn't tell you and you sort of even with me you know thinking I suspend belief I suspend disbelief I suspend disbelief I thought you wouldn't have not told them this all this time. So suddenly we go to the beginning. Mm. She's suddenly back in the quantum realm and mm. we get her explanation. She's the first quarter of the film, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. And then in that sense, we we haven't got Paul Rudd. We haven't, I love all this stuff on Earth with the book and the fact that people mistake him for Spider Man. Mm. All that sort of funny yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Paul Rudd does brilliantly. Well, I think that's, well, that's Ant Man at his best. It is at his best, but there wasn't enough of that. I mean, I love Michelle Pfeiffer. I, I still find I her beautiful. Find, she's but, gorgeous. But again, I found with her and Michael Douglas, and it didn't help knowing Michael Douglas doesn't know what the hell's going on when he's filming these scenes. <laughs> I, I just felt that neither of them really knew what was going on. And you fe I really felt with all of the characters and the actors in this film, that they were acting in a green screen studio. Yeah. And I think that doesn't help performances. I thought the script was really uninventive. I think you're right. Right at the beginning, it was kind of humorous, the riff in the yeah. bookshop reading. At the end, it was kind of humorous, him kind of wondering whether, you know, a bad day at work is actually about the end of the world. I like all of that. Yeah, I do. None of that in the, in the entire body of the film, where he's in the real world, no. toying with the kind of not real world. No. None of it across the rest of the film. And then even moments, like I said before, where you would have scenes where, say, I don't know, he, he reunites with his daughter for a moment or reunites with the character. There's a cheesy line of, oh, I've always loved you. And then there was no there was no kind of barbed witticism off the back no, of it. No, it was literally, was... oh, this is really, this is not Paul Rudd. No, this no is not but also he doesn't save the day. It, it sort of seemed to me that it was Michelle Pfeiffer. I've got nothing against Michelle Pfeiffer. No, no. But in terms of, we, we followed her for the first quarter of the film. And then for the last, I would say, quarter of the film, Michael Douglas comes into his own and really saves the day. What, what? Yeah, but with his with his hands. Yeah, I thought that was hysterical. <laughs> Have I really got to push my hands in here and all of that? I, I, but every I time they cut the to him, he was like... I didn't mind the fact he didn't know what he was doing. I thought that was charming. <sighs> but throughout the whole film, and now is my link of what did work incredibly well in this film, and maybe the only thing that worked incredibly well, Mr. Mr. Monster. Kang the Conqueror. Kang the Conqueror, mm. who goes from beginning to end. He's there when Michelle... Fight. He is the thing that she's trying to mm. tell them about. Mm. There was this man... If I interrogated what he was saying, Kang, 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 I didn't believe it, but I believed him. He's threatening, and I believed him as, as somebody who could be so selfish that he was going to take the world down with him. I loved and his calm, was. brooding, building yeah. malevolence. I mean, you know, clearly they've Marvel have hit upon a brilliant sort of uh, reversioning or reboot of the Thanos concept, yeah. which and Thanos was incredibly calm as he did. I mean, the, the idea that half of all people and creatures is, is dealt with with the click of a finger. Didn't have the it's very hard to know how you trump that with a villain that's gonna, and I think they went 85% of the way to achieving yeah. that with him. Yeah. I think what's interesting is there are a couple of moments where he loses his shit. Yes. And I don't think he should have done. I think he should have stayed oh. calm to the very end. Yeah. And I found, you know, us having had all this elaborate sort of quantum realm high-tech wizardry pokery yeah. the idea that him and ant-man at the end would just have a punch up to to, yeah, to resolve things just seemed a bit ludicrous i didn't mind the fact that he went full you know he went full sort of smashing everything much because it wasn't a lot he did he didn't do it a lot and mm. i sort of i thought even within that i'm losing my shit and i'm the worst monster in the world he held it back slightly i thought he so was there was room to mm. to get into the real i thought he brought an enormous amount to the part and yeah. i have to say i think one of the one of the biggest things i think was the problem with this film was the script yes because what i felt ended up happening for poor old jonathan majors was they built him nicely he introduced himself nicely his arc was so gradual yeah, and, and i thought that was all great he was sort of he was sort of twisting and turning you felt there was good in him you felt that actually if he struck a deal he'd keep the deal even though he kind yeah. of wants to destroy yeah, things yeah that's true actually. and i like that aspect of it because then you think oh so they, they, they built his character up to that point hadn't they yeah and i like the idea that even within a huge villain malevolent character there's honor there's yeah. his own form of yeah, honor no, i thought well true. that was great what was the problem with his dialogue was that the script wasn't clever enough to get away from him using the word time all the time. So he kept talking about time. So it felt like they were laboring a point 
mm. that then began to feel not very imaginative or sophisticated. Or Okay, so we've got many different time things. I want to play with time. Time's going to get me. Time's always going to get... And I just thought it lost itself in its own... I think this gets lost up its own quantum realm, this film. It would do, though. Yeah, it would do. But I just... And then I just thought, I don't know. I didn't care about... You know, you had these... You had these communities in the quantum realm who were rebelling. Yeah. Star Wars again, the rebellion. Yeah, it was. The creep, you know, you had a thing with a kind of cylindrical head. You had I a know. jelly that wanted yeah. orifices. I mean, that yeah. was mildly funny for a minute. It was mildly funny. But there was no cohesion between any of them. And I no. get that it's the quantum realm, we shouldn't. But I didn't really believe any of that. No, I didn't. I, I didn't like, I thought for saying, how many years is it since Star Wars? 20? And I'm a big creature 30? fan, yeah. yeah no, no, 40 I am. years. A real mistake to make a lot of those guards to have nothing as a face because you've got nothing to... Nothing to, to go on. Nothing to go on. Which brings us to Cory, whatever his name is, the giant head. Oh, Modok. I mean, Modok. Modok, I mean, he, Modok. He, he was well... Well, he, I don't know if he's well defined, but there's certainly quite a bit of him towards the end. Well, Cory Stoll, who plays he yeah, Modok now, as Darren, Darren Croft. Well, I, like I thought it. he brought great humour. Yeah. Um, a bit creepy and, and very, weird. Very creepy. Very creepy. And tragedy. Exactly, I like him. I thought I his arc him. was brilliant with his little little limbs and his big. I thought he was brilliant. I thought Kang was was really really good. Yeah. Though I think again the script yeah, and, no, the, I and the narrative it. arc really dropped him at the end. I have to say I thought the I didn't stay to the very 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 end, but I thought the mid credits oh, um, pick up was really awful. Did you him running? Around, I mean, he, it was Jonathan Majors in the most ridiculous outfits, running around going. <laughs> Yeah, I quite and I like, get what they were going for, but yeah. it just felt a bit cringe. It did, but the trouble is, I'm an absolute. I mean, I absolutely love the whole ant thing. Yeah, so it tell us, be. you like that scene? There's a moment where he, uh, Paul Rudd as Ant Man multiplies into million, yeah. a million possible, possible yeah. versions of himself. And although yeah, that was nice, yeah, the sort of same bit of me and the bit of me that knows it's all CGI, and whatever he's saying, this is ridiculous. The spectacle of it, the spectacle mm. of it gets me, and it was on a big screen. Yeah, that was, music. Yeah. I mean, I, I love that. Yeah, I thought that was a very powerful use of that technique, which is perhaps why when it happens with Kang later, it didn't yeah, feel as convincing. Yeah, it felt very, no, it didn't. And, it, felt, it, and felt, all, it was all sort of down here instead of up here. And so also, it, I felt like it was too consciously trying to say, look, you may kill one Kang, but yeah. there are a million other Kangs. Yeah. And then you think, well, I don't actually want that to be what is unbeatable about him. And I got really disappointed when he was thrown against a building, <laughs> when he was successfully punched, because it made me think, well, okay, you could try and knock off every individual version of Kang repeatedly yeah. in the quantum realm. I wanted there to be something inherent about Kang that is, I guess it's his multiplicity and his ability to harness it. Yeah. But I don't know, I just and thought the there was fact something weird about it. what's going to happen. Well, well it is does. that a good thing or a bad thing? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, it if, is, it's if, a bad if he knew thing. what was going to happen, he would have been better prepared for a fist fight with that <laughs> man, wouldn't he? I mean, that, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, maybe. So there was all of that. I have to say, my biggest disappointment with this, and like, it was creeping in with the second Ant Man, it, oh, and, okay. and in his appearances, in Ant Man's appearances in the Avengers film. Why, oh, why, oh, why, when he's called Ant-Man, is he just always big? No, no, that's, you You said that. I, I absolutely agree with that. It makes nonsense of it. And even in all the fight scenes, and as the film goes on, and as he sort of, um, you know, comes back into it at the end, none of his sort of fighting or anything, he used his little powers. I mean, why didn't no. he become little and run up his... No, I mean, no you're absolutely right. It was just straightforward kind of fist punching or, of he's gonna lose. or running I mean, or suddenly growing big. I, I mean, even the sort of reference to Thor... I mean, in a sense, I thought it was sort of... He was saying... He, they were acknowledging that in the film, yeah. but it just did not work. No, And no. what... You, like, just now when we were talking, I said there wasn't anything of the Wasp. What did the Wasp do in that scene that was actually... I just thought I've always found the Wasp really irritating. Yeah, no, but, um, but also... And she doesn't really add anything. She's always sort of like... She's second to the main event. She's always like watching on and looking on. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, she's I'm not supposed to save him if all else fails, but the daughter was the one that... The I thought the daughter... I thought the, girl I the, the daughter, daughter was really good. I, I, she, I thought she was excellent. Was yeah, well, I did. I thought she was a good face. She was really good. But my final thing is, is that I genuinely think that what makes Ant-Man really innovative, really clever, really sort of unique and must-see is when he is... His diminutive stature when he becomes an ant makes the ordinary world seem science fiction and supernatural and yeah, weird and odd. Yeah, exactly. And that's the cleverness. That's what I liked about the first film. It's like, oh, wow, he goes small, he runs through here. Suddenly, a bathroom is like a planet of, yeah, of, of yeah. danger. And because we were in this quantum realm, there was no dramatic input or yeah. aspect to him going small at all. And I think they probably found that. What's a small ant going to do in the quantum yeah. realm? When you think about it, that goes back to the Incredible Shrinking Man, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, yeah. that was or such Fantastic a good... Voyage, do you remember yes. that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that is what the point of a small mm. insect is. Mm. And I just felt, I mean, there was, no, no, there was nothing of him doing that. 
The wasp did nothing. It was a yeah. mother. Again, it was a father and daughter story in a way, wasn't it? Yeah. I liked the big head. Thought yeah, that was Mordor, the, that was, was that was the mainly funny bit Darren. because there wasn't much funny. <laughs> Bill Murray. Funniness. What about Bill Murray? Scene? I can't bear him now, but that's probably that's because of all sorts it's of rumors. all the stuff that's coming out. About yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he does. And he played in, the same part anyway. He plays himself and everything. Yeah. I mean, he did. I, I quite liked it. I mean, I suppose I liked it because it was just he a spike of difference. Yeah, no, exactly. It was a spike exactly. of difference within a sort of. It was like I felt like I watched in a really colourful wallpaper past before me yeah and I did think I mean it's so funny because you so I didn't know what you guys you hadn't done your review at that point and I so sort of was with you in terms of I can't believe that all these years after Star Wars the cantina thing uh, is going on still yeah. have nobody come up has nobody come up with a different idea for that yeah, it and weird. I felt because of the jelly type thing they were saying this is a different idea it wasn't good enough it was all very derivative it, it was, was all very sort of familiar but not in a sort of comforting way it was just like a they were of... much better in a way when they focused on the like the 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 um, Mordok is his name, Mordok. The Mordok, and also the Kang. Kang. Um, yeah. And they focused but, on individual sort of people rather than the whole general. Well, thing. and it's really important to say Marvel fans here will be sort of screaming out, This is setting up Kang. Kang was obviously. Yeah, like, it's very obvious. I didn't realise he was set up in Loki. This is really establishing him as the villain. I thought they had established him really well, and then they diminished him towards the end of the film, and then they tried to resurrect him again yeah. in the after, in the mid credit sequence, and that, I think, was a misbeat. I do think Marvel is in a bit of an existential crisis. Oh. I think they're flooding too much into the marketplace. I think they're thinking more about where the films and the characters sit within the bigger picture of Phase mm. 5, mm. rather than actually what makes a really engaging, nuanced, light and shade story. It can still be a nuanced, light and shade story yeah. and be massively popular and entertaining. Just looking at some, just having seen the kids looking at some of the old Marvel films, they were doing it really well back yeah. then. And I just worry now that this is about positioning a villain rather than actually making the most of Ant-Man. This is about positioning the quantum realm rather than actually going for a really good story. And you know, my favorite things are like when Spider-Man's a teenager and he's trying to deal with what yeah. it means to be a superhero. Yeah, yeah. My favorite thing is like Joker, you know, becoming this kind of, or the Batman. Yeah. Origin stories are great. And also sticking with the day-to-dayness of struggling with being a superhero is quite nice. So even like I saw the other day, you know, the Hulk's romance with Black Widow, or what is going on there, and all that sort of... That's what I want from these films. And I just thought this was... The illusion, really, of the real world and the... And the, and the, the yeah, world, the fusion yeah. of the two, and the way the two that's, are set. That is what is interesting. And now we've gone into just totally unreferential kind of... Quantum. I mean, what would make it sort of suddenly become interesting to me is if the quantum realm was actually inside Thanos' head or something. Yeah, yeah. That would yeah. be good. And I mean, I loved all the sort of multiplicity, especially, it must be the beekeeper. Yeah, well, they mentioned the show didn't scare, don't Yeah, they, they do, in, in, in the insect thing. But then I did think, even as I was loving that and watching it, and I didn't mind the Kang multiplicity yeah. either at the end, but I was thinking, where on earth can they go with this after yeah. this? Because yeah. you can't just keep on no. making more and more and yeah. filling the screen up. Yeah, I agree. I think the next movie, which I think is Guardians of the Galaxy, is crucial for the yeah. Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe, because for me, this was a real misstep. And I, I went into this a huge Paul Rudd fan, a huge Ant-Man fan, really looking forward to a new villain being established. It did do that, it did establish Yeah, the, the villain. villain was good, and everybody, they, I mean, in a way, they were surfing because everybody loves Paul Rudd, everybody loved, I don't, never met a person that doesn't love him. It's not even it, very. He wasn't, but that walking down the street and smiling and accepting he's the brilliant. Spider-Man thing, he's absolutely yeah, brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. yeah, and I just wanted more of that, even within the scenes of kind of drama and what have you, but yeah, yeah it was a weird film. So if I was actually to score this, I, I, I would go slightly worse than Rotten Tomatoes. I'd give oh. this 40 out of 100. You wouldn't. Yeah, I was really really disappointed. Nadia could barely keep her eyes open. I was going to ask you about Nadia. Yeah, she, she just didn't get it. And I, she loved, and the thing about that is she's your sort of non-specialist yeah. Marvel fan who liked Ant-Man. Oh, that's sad. I'd give it far more than that. Oh, okay. I'd give it 82. 82? Yeah. Wow. Maybe for those... Oh, so you're, you're really swimming against the tide with yeah, this Yeah, no, one. no, I am. Mm. I like the multiplicity of images. I, okay. I like, okay, and also, good. I don't think I'm... Actually, it's a lack of sophistication in some ways. I know when something's CGI, but I don't think I actually can see the difference between good CGI and not good CGI. Right. Sometimes, I think sometimes. It, it wasn't even that it wasn't good CGI. It's just that if I sit within that world for too long, I, it, it begins to just become bland. Yeah, I, w- I was. Yeah, I'm giving you eight to two because I was totally gripped immersed. by it. Yeah, okay. immersed. Yeah, well, which good. is what a film should do. Absolutely. Well, again, what do you think, guys? Are you a Marvel fan? Uh, did it sort of tick the boxes in terms of Phase Five? Did you miss the the original sense of Ant Man? Yeah. Am I missing the point here? Is Rotten Tomatoes wrong? What do you think? Is Nanny Die right? And is Nanny Die right? <laughs>